Hello everyone. In my experience, I've observed several common patterns. PhD students tend to struggle and in the worst case, even to fail and quit their PhD program. So today I want to go over the five most common mistakes and suggest ways to avoid them. I'm going to rank this from the least impactful to the most impactful. So make sure to stick until the end. And before we start, please make sure to like and subscribe to the channel so that more students can actually view this content. In position number five, we have focusing too much on teaching classes and taking classes. And this is a common mistake done by teaching assistants who have, in addition to taking their own classes, also they need to teach some classes and usually undergraduate classes. So these students tend to have a feeling that they are very busy because they need to teach and also they need to take and study for their own classes. And as a result, this feeling of being busy translates into the feeling of actually making good progress towards their PhD. And so they actually forget that the real advancement towards the completion of your PhD is actually making research progress. However, by the time they realize this, maybe one year or two years have already passed. And so a lot of time has been somehow wasted. So my suggestion is to start research from the beginning, find an advisor, start working on a research problem that you like, and even if you're going to make small progress, at least you are actually working on research. And by the time maybe you will be done with classes, you already have one paper submitted or almost ready to be submitted. And so you will be already rolling and ready to make further progress. So in position number four is getting isolated. And by this, I mean being isolated from your advisor, from your colleagues and from the community in general. So that you want to meet your advisor as often as you need ask as many questions as you need to ask and try to get as many answers as you can. This is the right way in order to make progress towards your final goal, which is getting your PhD. So try to make those meetings regular and as effective as possible. The second aspect is that you need to connect with the other students in your lab, in your department and in your university potentially, because those students are in the same boat as you. They may have gone through the same problems that you are having now. And so it's great to share your situation and also hear from them. In general, it's good to have the feeling of being surrounded by people that are in your same situation. Finally, you also need to try to connect as much as possible to other people in the community, both more senior and also at, at your level, because this is going to be the network that one day will provide you opportunities such as, for example, maybe a postdoc position or maybe a collaboration or maybe participate in a project, etc. In position number three is losing the big picture. In research, it is hard to know exactly in which direction you are going. There is this very famous quote from Einstein that says, if we knew what we were doing, then it wouldn't be called research. As a result, it may happen to students, for example, to spend a lot of time trying to add some details in the code that will have no impact on the final results or while writing a paper to write excessive details about a certain part, not really adding anything useful to the paper. So in general, you need to learn to be efficient and effective in what you're doing. And in order to do this, you need to keep meeting with your advisor to learn what is the best way of approaching your research problem and your work in general. In position number two is the lack of proper time management. And this is a transversal comment that goes through several points that we have made in this video, starting, for example, from spending too much time in teaching and taking classes or adding certain details to the code, which are not really important to the results that you're going to achieve, or for example, not meeting your advisors consistently. In general, the problem here is not prioritizing what is really important in order to achieve your final goal. So my suggestion is to be persistent, work on a problem that you are passionate about, and also find some time to enjoy life in order to have a good work-life balance. The number one mistake, the one that in my opinion, can have the most dramatic consequences, which is the wrong advisor. So here the problem is understanding what it means to select the right advisor. And there are many, many different aspects, and I may even do a video to just address this specific issue, but here I want to mention some of them. So the first one, of course, is the research topic. So you want to find someone that has an interest that align with your interests. Also, you need to make sure that your advisor is graduating students that are successful. So go and look at the advisor's record of publications and record of funding in order to understand what are the possibilities of publishing with that person and also what are the possibilities, for example, of getting a research assistantship at some point. But most importantly, you need to make sure you pick someone 
that you can also have a good working relationship. And this goes beyond the technical capabilities or the quality of their CV. This really has to do with their personality. You need to try to understand what it means to work with them. And the best way of doing this is to talk to their students. And I always recommend to do this to everyone that either wants to come to work in my lab or wants to go to work in someone else's lab, contact the students and talk to them and try to understand what it means to work with that specific person. So this concludes this video. I hope it was useful. And please let me know in the comments below if there are some other points that you think are important as well. And if there is any other topic that you would like me to cover in the future. Thank you very much for watching and bye.